Hello and welcome to PMC's first ever podcast. I'm Tom Handel, the executive director here and PMC, Portland Media Center. And I'm here with three very wonderful people who put together this podcast studio and have been involved with PMC for quite some time. Uh, Josh Riddle, our production coordinator, and um, Dino Raymond and Brian Delaney are two wonderful board members who put a lot of their time and talent into this organization as well. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. We're kind of feeling ourselves, uh, feeling our way into this because uh, this podcast studio is still in development. Like I said, it's our first ever podcast, but we're hoping to maybe flesh out some some areas where we can improve it, make it better. Um, Josh spent yesterday painting this studio so we don't have the acoustic treatments on the wall to make it the, the sound we want. But we first we just thought we'd get this out there and just uh, see how it flies and uh, make improvements as we go along. This is uh, July 3rd, 2020. 2020. And we are hoping perhaps to launch this by September, perhaps even in August, but we're going to spend the next month uh, testing this out, perhaps with a few other groups. So um, to just get started with a little background on this, uh, for a few years, people have been coming in and saying to me, uh, I'd like to do a podcast. And I'd say to them, well, just go into our studio and, uh, uh, you know, do an interview show, and it'll just take the audio. Well, not not too many people were interested in do There were people interested in doing that already, but the people who wanted podcasts weren't very interested in right. doing that. So my question is, and I think I'll put this to Brian, <laughs> is um, why? Why a podcast studio? Why a podcast? Well, podcasts uh, have become what radio journalism used to be. And there are still great professional radio journalists out there and you can hear that on the air if you happen to tune in on time um but even those journalists are taking that product and putting it into podcasts so that you can listen to it on demand and so podcasting has become what radio journalism used to be and that's different than video um, the audio quality is different. The production, um, techniques are a little different. The equipment is different. And, um, <clears throat> Portland Media Center, we have the video studio and we had that set up and we said it makes perfect sense for us to also provide an audio only setup. And I can see right off the bat that doing a podcast is a lot easier, a lot simpler. It's more like sit down and do it rather than all the work and actually uh, labor that's involved in doing a, a studio production. So you actually can get this done more uh, efficiently than in the studio if all you want to do is capture the audio from it. So I see that that can be available to a lot of different people. Also, I'm noticing that the sound in this is a lot better than what I would imagine from a studio, even though our studio sound is pretty good. This is a totally different one, and we don't even have, like I said, the acoustic treatments on the wall. Right, right, and we do have the acoustic treatments uh, already purchased, so they'll be going up soon. The, uh, the neat thing about this is the equipment. This equipment is dedicated to podcasts, so the microphones are especially uh, uh, made for voice. The board itself that uh, we purchased, the PMC is a brand new podcasting uh, uh, board called the Roadcaster Pro. It is phenomenal. We've got in our room right now uh, three microphones hardwired to it, and Brian Delaney is connected via Bluetooth from a, from a phone, from a mobile phone, right into the board. So that does things like uh, if you don't want to have a whole lot of people in a small little podcast studio, we can uh, do uh, conference calls on one phone and Bluetooth it right to the board and have four or five people right in the room. And, of course, that's handy now uh, given the situation, the public health situation that we're dealing with to have right, people right. you know, operate and do things remotely. So this is, is facilitating that. Um, 
our mission right along has been to help people exercise their free speech. Uh, we changed our name a few years ago from the Community Television Network to the Portland Media Center, specifically because we knew that television and, and cable were not being used as much as other forms of media. And so this goes kind of along in the same lines with that. And we're going to be offering the podcast studio the same way that we've been offering our video production services in that we can train you to do it yourself or we can do it for you for, for a cost. Um, who, who is this, this uh, studio that you, uh, who will be accessing this studio? Well, you know, I really think that the podcast studio is the perfect way for someone to break in. Uh, I've heard so many times people say, oh, I've got this idea. I don't know what to do with it, but I've got this idea. Well, if, if you think it might be a TV show or a movie, but you're not really sure, or... You've always wanted to have a radio show. Why not start with a podcast? Come on in. We've got the equipment. We'll teach you how to do it. We'll teach you how to engineer it if that's your choice. We could engineer it for you. Uh, we're, we're really, I think, this, uh, this podcast studio is for anybody that has a story to tell. That's great. And, you know, um, one of the things that, that one of the, the uh, founding of, the Portland Media Center way back when it was a community television network in 1986 was to also serve the uh, nonprofit local nonprofit community here. So when we talk about anyone that has a story to tell, we're talking about individuals, any individual, regardless of their income, as well as nonprofit organizations. We're really gearing this toward the people who really right now wouldn't be able to access this kind of service any other way. Right. And, it do, and doesn't it, you've mentioned this in the past, doesn't it really go back to the whole uh, uh, First Amendment? Yes. It really does. Absolutely. And now more than ever with everything that's happening, it's, it's really important to maintain whichever way we can a voice for the people locally rather than as an alternative to the barrage of national information that we get, which is often corporately controlled. And nothing is controlled here right. except the individual who puts it out there. Um, Josh, what is the process for somebody to go through in order to do a podcast? Well, it's an easy process, which is fantastic. That's the way we like it. We want it to be as simple for the public as possible. So um, as Dino was saying, you know, we're going to offer different levels of services. So if someone wants to come in, schedule a time, you want us to enter into the show, happy to do it. Um, you want to do it yourself? That's great. Um you want to learn more about the studio. You want to learn the nitty gritty, the ins and outs of all of, of the board, the software. We're going to offer classes for that. You want to learn about the editing process, you know, how to actually direct a show. You know, a lot of people listen to podcasts, but they don't know how to run one. Um, you know, that's something we're going to get into. We'll, we'll teach you all about that. Um, really, the sky's the limit um, in terms of how involved you want us to be or not. Um, but as far as just getting in here, you know, with a couple of... Uh, just a couple things to learn. It's really as simple as just hitting, and you users can't see or you uh, listeners can't see, but there's a big red button that says record. You hit that, and you're ready to go. You know you're recording, yeah, and that's really important to keep <laughs> keep aware of as we go it's along. It's important here. to remember that, yes. So one thing that's a little bit different that I, I just want to touch on is the cost of doing this. We didn't. Um, intrinsically have this established as something that was a free service to the public as uh, the Cable Act required public access stations to be so that when we got equipment, we got it from Time Warner and there was some money allocated for the operation of it through the franchise agreement to make that happen. This is something that will be a charged service. Right. However, we uh, envision a lot of different levels of costs. If somebody wants to come in here, just sit down and have staff take care of everything, that's going to be one cost. But if people want to learn, do it themselves, then the first cost up front will be, of course, the classes. And then the use of the podcast to studio will be hourly, but it'll be at the lowest rate possible. So um, could you talk a little bit about... Josh started to mention about the classes. What kind of classes do you think um, we, will we, be, we will be offering in order to make this happen for people? Well, I think first and foremost, what's going to happen is you, uh, 
when you come in, when someone comes in, and, and we're going to have to teach them how to use the, the uh, podcast board, the Rodecaster Pro. Once we do that, and really, we can have you up and running in 30 minutes or less. It really, it's a crash course introduction. This is a very simple board, and uh, it's, it's really quick and easy. Um, we can, and again, like Josh said, we can teach you how to do it yourself, and you're all set. If you really don't want anything to do with the technical stuff, you just want to tell your story, we can take care of that too. And then after that, we get into the sound editing, which is the finishing of the story. Most podcasts, the vast majority of them, uh, no one, really almost no one does them live. That's because, uh, you know, people make mistakes. People stumble on words. That whole, or, or, the, or the conversation goes in a direction you never really intended it to go. And that's where uh, editing finishing, and really the, the arc, the storytelling comes in. And that, Josh and I were talking about that earlier, that's a great way to really get further in depth about the whole art of storytelling through audio. Right, Brian? Yeah, well, and I wanted to go back to what Tom said about affordable. Um, the classes really are, are the cost of maybe four cups of coffee at Starbucks. Um, maybe five. They, maybe five. They are, well, it depends on what you have in your coffee, <laughs> I guess. Um, they are affordable for what you, what you can learn and to have someone who is available to answer questions for you in the studio um, after the fact. You take the class, you come in, and you start your production, and then you kind of hit a wall and say, I don't, I don't remember how to do this there's somebody that you can ask that question to and you're not stuck on your own having to go chase down the rabbit holes of the interweb to figure out, um, well, how do I get this done? Right. And, you know, that's one of the benefits of coming to a studio that is set up for the public. Now, um, that's a, I'm glad you brought up that point because this is one of the first four uh, a charge services that we've had that, you know, that there, isn't a, there isn't a component of it that's absolutely free. But we're, our major mission here is to get people's voices heard. So having staff here, one of the things is we don't want you to feel out uh, in the cold about anything. Um, we've, all, we've had the same experience with video, and if people need to take additional classes to get more familiar or more comfortable with that, there might be a slight charge to do that again, but we want people to feel like their thing is going to get done. They're not out in the cold, um, and it's going to be affordable to them. And even for people who have really, really, really limited incomes, as always, even for the things that we charge right now, if people show that they're on public assistance or getting some kind of financial assistance in some way, we make these things available to them through volunteer time instead of money. You know, and I think that's an incredible part of the Portland Media Center. It's accessible to anyone who wants to come in, right? Volunteer, if you're paying with volunteer hours, you're just going to learn more. And the beautiful thing is, as Brian was saying, uh, you know, there's always someone here to help. There's always someone here to help, so you are not alone, like, like you mentioned. And, and uh, another point about the editing is just that um, we, we've envisioned that most of the time when people, you know, have to feel their way through a show, like I'm probably doing right now, and they don't have everything worked out or, or the, the story doesn't flow naturally, it has to be edited. But if they come in prepared and it's ready to go, there's usually, you know, cutting off the beginning and cutting off the end that has to happen. And I think for the most part, that is not a th something, we an editing we would charge for. Anything more than that would be. But what people get, can get after they're done with their podcast is a link to their video. They would have to supply their own flash drive or SD card to put it on to if they want to walk out of out of here with it physically, but but that's supply, you know. Right, and that's and that's important to remember. So when you come in, you make your recording, and we will send you a link to your audio file 
that will be on our server and available there. Um, there are other services with podcasts, uh, and then we get into hosting. You know, that's a different level. Hosting by a professional service allows you to be picked up by the different uh, media platforms, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, but that's how that works, and we'll be happy to teach you more about that. And uh, if you want to take your podcast from just being on demand off of our servers to something that's distributed in, uh, worldwide, uh, then we can talk about that. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up because I've just learned this morning uh, about the different variations of that. We won't be hosting people's podcasts. We will Correct. make them available on our website, but it's not the same as hosting. Hosting is disseminating, disseminating it broadly, and some people may come in here and all be re- already be paying for that and don't need that service. But if you need that service, We'll, we can offer it to you for an additional charge. Absolutely. So um, what special features? I, uh, we've gone through, we didn't set this up quite as quickly as we had hoped to because of the pandemic. Um, and because of that, we've taken some precautions or we've taken some steps to get additional equipment to um, make this usable, even with social distancing. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, one of the things uh, you'll notice, uh, it's sort of a simple thing, something we would have used anyway, pop filters. There's something that's going to protect the microphone because as different people come in and out, uh, we're going to have to keep this place clean, right? Uh, Pop filters, very easy to clean. We've got several that we're rotating in and out, so they'll be be as clean as possible and germ-free. We also have some microphone sanitizer that we'll be, uh, we'll be applying and using on a regular basis. Um, we are encouraging, or are we uh, mandating people use masks like we're not wearing right now? <laughs> this part, well, I guess, will be edited. Uh, I guess uh, based on people's comfort level, I don't know if that's a politically sound thing to say, but we have to kind of work on that. I don't know if you want to. We'll be editing that. But um, I also understand that the acoustical treatments that we've gotten for this room can be cleaned as well. Yes. That. So, so do, you, do you know anything more about that, Brian? I haven't even opened those boxes yet. Um, no. They're, they're foam, but they can be covered. Um, we'll, we will... Once we put them up and we get the room treated, we'll we'll look at how to do that. Um, the room is big enough that you you know you'll be on the host will be on one side of the desk, the um, the guest will be on the other side of the desk, and certainly I'm actually on a phone out, very social distancing. I'm about four miles away from the studio at the moment. So that was the that was the big um, one of the big selling points for the equipment that we bought was the ability to take in a call from outside of the studio and have that call be automatically um, optimized for recording. Yes. So I'm talking on a phone, but it's it's going to be better on the the call than if you were just to record the call on your cell phone. If you were to record the call on your cell phone, you get whatever's there. There's no treatment to the sound at all. Where in this case, um, you know, I'm talking and the board is doing its magic and it optimizes it so that it doesn't sound like I'm not in the studio with you. And if you were to come into the studio, you're trained as en- for engineering your own show, and you're doing a podcast series that interviews one person at a time, you could be in here with, with no purpose for having a mask on because you'll be in here by yourself, recording it by yourself, and interviewing somebody remotely. So that's, that's a basic setup that most people will use to podcast. So in and itself, the way that this thing is established 
uh, social distancing is, is inherent in it. Yes, yes, and it's, it's all very, very doable. So we, we've talked about the classes, we've talked about the costs, we've talked about everything else. Are, are there any other special features of this whole system that you think is important for people to know about? I think, um, you know, I haven't done too much podcast production, very little, but um, just really want to emphasize that what is being offered here at such an affordable range is just fantastic. You know, I mean, sometimes you think of, you know, the difference between public options and, and the real professional private options. You know, they've got, at least in the camera world, they've got these $100,000, you know, like multi-million dollar setups. You know, it's just out of range for most people. But this, I mean, I feel like, you know, we're going to be right up there with the big boys. This is fantastic that we're able to offer this, that it's so accessible. Um, another thing, as, as someone who, who teaches some of our video production classes, one of the things I, I, I notice is that people get, rightfully so, they get a little flustered. I mean, there's a lot happening on the in the studio, the cameras. Um, this, is, this is relaxing. I mean, I wish all my conversations sounded this good. I wish I could walk around all day with these headphones on because <laughs> this is just, this is enjoyable. I love it. This is, I just... I really just want to emphasize that I just think it's so great that people are going to have access to this. And it's just, I'm really excited to see where it goes. And the history behind the room that this is in, this room was built uh, initially as a uh, Avid editing station. We've long, no kidding, long time ago, left Avid behind and that's too bad. have had a few other permutations of editing. But it has track lighting in it rather than the fluorescent lighting. So Which is a big help. Just as Josh was mentioning, you know, this is a very comfortable space. The lighting in it is nice. The atmosphere, it's self-contained. It is, it's not really boxed in, but it's, 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 it's small enough to contain this stuff. Freshly and painted. And freshly painted. And freshly Thank you, Josh. Um, that it, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very uh, a conducive environment to a, a podcast. I feel that right now. It just Cozy. feels like a regular. If, I feel like I'm on radio, and I feel like it's uh, very professional professional looking as it is well, now. and I'll tell you. Oh, go ahead, Brian. To go back to um, the social distancing and the the safety issue, anything, you know, the headphones. Josh brought up the headphones, and that's probably the only piece of equipment that you w would wear or even need to touch other than the board. And we bought enough of those headphones so that they will be rotated out so that if somebody uses the headphones, it, it will be sanitized and then stored. And then the next person that comes in doesn't use that same set of headphones. So you're not putting something on your head that somebody else just had on their head. And, you know, so when we did purchase the equipment, we, we purchased it with safety in mind. Planning. Now, um, I am, I, I've been remiss a little bit, and um, my uh, people who are involved in marketing and visibility will, will get after me for this, but we did come up with a name for the podcast studio because now we have several different functions. We know, not only have just, we have the studio, and we have field cameras that people can check out. We have the editing stations, but we now have this podcast studio, which we're calling PMC Open Door Podcast. So uh, that's what we're christening this. And we recently, this week, had installed in another room a small studio for uh, individual soapboxing. You sit in front of a monitor or a, a screen that gives you several different backgrounds you can choose from, and you can speak your piece and record a short video, head and shoulders of yourself, saying what you want to say. Uh, this was installed by Videolink, which is now a business partner of ours because they will be sending clients to us who will be doing uh, presentations for uh, to, uh, or st live streaming to uh, national outlets such as CNN and Fox News and that sort of thing. And when that's not being used for that purpose, the general community can use that as well. So um, we have a few new things coming out and we're going to actually call that PMC Soapbox, uh, which was a, uh, a name that Dino came up with. So um, people should be on the lookout for, for all the different things that are happening, not just this podcast studio. But remember, this podcast studio is called PMC 
Open Door Podcast. Open Door Podcast, which I think is such a great name because it really goes back to the whole spirit of the First Amendment, people speaking their mind. Mm -hmm. Your stories are important. Your stories count. They need to be told. People need to hear them. And so it's, it's, it's wonderful to have all these different outlets now yes. as we grow. Yes, and, and, and our voices will continue to be heard as long as people support this kind of, of a facility. Is there any other information or ideas or thoughts that you have before we finish? I think uh, for all those millennials and Gen Zers out there like myself, um, maybe the idea, the name Soapbox, going back to that, I didn't know what that meant. I learned about it yesterday. Really cool. As a history fan and just someone who didn't know what it's what it means, um, Tom, do you want to quickly just explain the idea behind soapboxing? Because I think it's such a phenomenal name. Well, maybe Dino. I don't know. You came up with the name, right? Well, this is going to have to be edited because I can't remember the name of the corner. Oh well, you're talking about London, right? But what I knew, because I can't remember it either, but I didn't know about it. You and Leslie knew about it, but. What I always heard about this term is more or less, it goes back before any of our times, I'm sure. It really does. Is, 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 you know, get off your soapbox because the way people before, uh, you know, people had access to multimedia communications, they would stand on a soapbox or a box in the town square and just speak their mind out. And the First Amendment would guarantee them the right to be heard and, and not get arrested for speaking their mind. We know now that that's not necessarily true. We see that our freedom of speech being eroded away by protests where uh, protesters are getting attacked and people are feeling really negative or, or encouraged to feel ne negative about protests when demonstration is the heart and soul of free speech. But... Um, that's where the term came from, to be able to stand on a corner. And there's a specific place in London where you do just yes. that, and there's another name for it. I don't know what and it is. And, you know, and I think what's important to remember, um, as all of this stuff is going on, the Portland Media Center is now expanding into all these different uh, outlets, all these different ways to get your message out there. And that, to me, is a very New England, very uh, uh, upfront and direct way to address all of the things going on in our country right now and in the world. Because again, your your story matters. People need to hear what you are thinking, and it, it, this is what a great way to do it. And it's the combination of ideas, not any one single point of view, that makes us stronger. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, I The purpose of this podcast is, uh, as I said, is to let people know it's coming up. It's not something that right now will be available, uh, and I'm talking about the beginning of July. But we hopefully will have um, most of the kinks worked out of this by the end of the month and being able to Absolutely. start to open it up to people sometime in August, but definitely by September. Oh, without question. Absolutely. I just want to thank so much... Um, the time and effort that Josh, Brian, and Dino have put into this because most of this was unpaid. The reason why it's going to be available to the general public is because of the in-kind time and effort that they've put into it, as well as equipment and their expertise. Uh, that The expertise is something that didn't come from me, nor did we really necessarily have to pay for it. So I just really want to thank you, gentlemen, for for being such such champions of free speech. Happy to do it. Absolutely, it is <laughs> truly an honor. Happy to do it. So thank you very much. Pleasure to know you guys. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be bringing you more podcasts. <laughs>